And I'll never forget it. I was sitting on the couch and I was just bawling. I was just so overwhelmed with my work-life balance and just feeling like I had, like I didn't have a purpose. And I, I'll never forget, he was rubbing my back and he was like, I just wish I could make it better. And that was like, I know like there's that term like an aha moment, but for me, it really was. It was like, oh, okay, I have to, like no one's coming to save me. Like I have to fix this. Like I have to take responsibility for my life and not stay at the job that everyone tells me is great and like tells me is a wonderful opportunity, which it was, but it just wasn't like filling my cup. Like it wasn't life-giving to me in any way. And not that your career has to be life-giving, but it was like soul sucking <laughs> at that point. And so I had this moment of realizing like what I'm not changing, I'm choosing. And I was like, holy crap, I have to change some things because I wouldn't choose this. Help Me See is a podcast that redefines the word vision through vulnerable and real conversations, my own private introspective ramblings about the things that I think about in the wee hours of the morning, and my deep core belief that your nothingness is your everything, and all you have to do is see. I'm Bianca Mora, I'm your host, I am an educator, a photographic artist, and I believe that your daily photo habit can be the key to unlocking the ability to be more present in your everyday life and live deeper into your intention and purpose. We're not about the small talk here. Grab your coffee, get cozy, and let's talk. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. This week, we have Miss Kate House on the show, and she is a gift. She really is. She shares her story of um, basically living her life on purpose, and she calls it live by design, not by default, and the big change that she made when she found herself completely miserable in a job that everyone else was telling her was so wonderful and, um, you know, a great opportunity. And I feel like we can all relate to the sentiment of not being happy with something that we quote unquote should be happy with based on everyone else's perceptions and opinions that aren't actually living it themselves. Um, and even if they are, like, even if they're also in that job, they're not in your body, right? We're experiencing that thing. It's like the same idea as if, you know, you go out to dinner somewhere and you hate it and someone else loved it. You know, it's just different taste. We have different makeup in our DNA and in our life experiences and in our taste. And it's up to us to respect us. It's up to us to res respect our own experiences and our own truth. And something that I, I really want to touch on before we get into the show is this idea of being a stand for what it is you believe in, in your life and in your creation. Um, recently, I posted being a, uh, a story on Instagram about being a conscious creator. And I think that it's our responsibility in whatever we create, whether we're creating art or our art is our lives, because I truly believe that we are all, every single one of us are artists, um, regardless of technical proficiency. Um, I really believe that it's our responsibility to hold our core of what it is that we want to create and put out into the world um, and not bend at the whim of consensus um, and the masses. So what does that look like for me? Um, it's that feeling that I can get when someone reaches out to me about a photo session and I can tell from the context of what was written uh, 
that it's something that they're wanting, you know, bare bones, no frills, just want to get, you know, check this off the list, um, not looking to invest. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the tension happens when I feel this pressure to provide what it is that they want. But when that is that in direct conflict of my own beliefs of what I believe is possible for this medium and for what I want to give, it's my responsibility to be a stand for my own vision in that way. And to say, you know, here's what I offer. And there are so many other people that offer things. And, you know, if, if they're not interested in the depth at which I'm offering, which is totally valid, there's different places and spaces for everything and everyone, um, then that's okay. And I need to be okay with not engaging in that as well, right? But here's the interesting crux. Here's the part that I think is so important that can get really blurry and really hazy. It's this idea of holding and respecting our vision while still being open to the purity of witnessing what's in front of us. So it's like our container, right? What is the container? What is the conditions that we are responsible for upholding and providing in the art that we're, we're creating for a family, for whoever it is that we're photographing or drawing, whatever it is that we're creating for that person. How do we dance on that beautiful thread, that line of here's what I'm coming here to provide, but I'm still open to you showing me what is beautiful about your truth. Okay. So it's, it's like coaching. It's like the best masterminds and coaches don't fill in the blanks for you. They draw your truth out. And as a creator, as a photographer, as an artist, I believe it is my responsibility to not go in and frantically scan the scene over what is the most forgiving light? What is the most flattering pose? What is the clearest corner that doesn't have stuff out? It's not about that. It's really not about that. It's about walking into an environment, being humbled by the fact that you're being welcomed into someone's home or someone's time with their loved ones, wherever you are, and being open to witnessing, not seeing not contriving, but being open to witnessing what's in front of you. I could never in a million bajillion years have directed the scenarios that naturally emerged from this precious family that I photographed, the last one I photographed, um, on my own. I really give minimal direction. I engage and I can, you know, prompt in a way that's more actually conversational and asking questions uh, and getting curious as to what that sparks. Um, but it's not about controlling the scene. It's not about telling someone what to do. And I think that we can think that or feel that pressure or responsibility when we're too wrapped up in our ego and too wrapped up in, well, we should be the one telling them how to be. No, it's our job to remind people that they are the most beautiful when they are just experiencing, when they're just being. I used to think this all the time when I worked in uh, downtown in San Francisco and I would be going to work and I'd see people completely completely lost in their own world, like whether they had headphones in or they're on the phone or just rushing to work and not thinking about how they look. They're just going somewhere and they're lost in that. Everyone looked so beautiful to me. It sounds so weird. I know, but it 
when a person is lost in their own thought or in their own life and experience of what something is, rather than being concerned with performing for you or anyone else for that matter, it's the most beautiful, it's the most true, it's the most honest thing. And it's magic. And there's a real art to being able to foster that environment. Um, And I'm crystal clear about that. And um, that's why I'm working on a, a course around being a conscious creator and redefining um, what that vision is and how to create that condition, that container um, to see. Okay, that was longer than I anticipated. I just, I'm so lit up about it. So there's that. Um, so now we're going to hear from Kate. She has her own podcast. She's a coach. Um, and she is a stand for finding the things in life in which feel good to you and really leaning into that and not defaulting in any way, even in the smallest ways. And it's just beautiful to hear her story, hear her speak. Um, there's a part in it that she talks about, which I'm naming this episode after, um, which she had this aha moment of, you know, no one's coming to save me. If I want a different experience, I need to create that. I have goosebumps just talking about it. It was beautiful. Um, and that's the truth. You know, I think it's easy to fall into, you know, all people want from me is this, or I really want to do this, but the expectation, everyone looks for this. It doesn't matter. But it matters, but I can't get work because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, Some tough love for me from someone that's living it and has lived it for a long time. Find ways to honor your truth. I'm not talking about the severity of quitting your job and blah, blah, blah. Find the ways that honor your truth while also helping you feel safe because we really can't act in a pure way when we're not feeling safe. Um, So when you create the conditions for yourself to be comfortable, then you can really hold strong for what it is that you want to do and what it is that you want to contribute to the world and to the people that come to you for X, Y, and Z. Um, I know this is a little bit abstract. I, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, any of my emails, if you're on my email list and I email about once a week, um, talking about the podcast episode and whatever's coming up. If you hit reply, I am more than happy to start a conversation with you. I actually would love it so much. Enjoy Kate. And if you want to hear more from Kate, um, check the links in the show notes where I'll link where you can find her. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. Today is a special one. We have Miss Kate House in the house today. <laughs> she is a podcast host. She is a coach. She is my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was just on Kate's podcast a couple of weeks ago. We recorded and we just have a bajillion things in common. So I cannot wait to have her here and bring her to all of you. So hi, Kate. How are you? And thanks for being here. Oh my gosh, Bianca, this is such a pleasure. I, like I said, when we first hopped on our call, I have been looking forward to this ever since our last chat because I got off our first call and I was telling my husband, I was like, I think I met my new bestie. Like we live many states apart, but I found her. (laughs) (laughs) Distance doesn't mean much. It's fine. Exactly. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, if you guys enjoy Help Me See, I am sure that you will love Kate's podcast, um, Live by Design, right, Kate? So yep, that's please the tell one. us a little bit about the Live by Design podcast and 
and then just about you and your story and just everything that's brought you here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I I love that question. So I, I founded or I started the Live by Design podcast back in July of 2020. And it was one of those things where it was like a couple months into the pandemic. I had had it on my heart to like, I wanted to start a podcast. Um, and I just hadn't like, I just hadn't done it. Right. And I was like, well, my husband's working from home now. I have at that time I had a 10 month old and a one and a half, almost two year old. And I was like, well, it's now or never, like, I'm never going to have as much help as I have right now. I'm a full-time stay at home mom. And I was like, well, I've got more pockets of time now. So I'm, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and so I started the podcast really as a passion project. I, I love this idea of being a lifelong learner getting to be in community with really incredible people. So Bianca, people like yourself, where the cool thing about hosting a podcast is you get to meet all these people that come and guest on your show or when you go on theirs. And so you create this community of people who are all, in my words, like looking to live by design and, and live by design for me, it's really about living by design and not by default. And so I've tried to find the person who said this quote for the longest time. I've seen it attributed to Amelia Earhart, which I kind of love, but I can't substantiate that claim. But I heard, I saw someone once, I, this was like over a decade ago, post a quote to like their Facebook page and it said, live by design, not default. And it just stuck with me. I had like, I have a, a rack up on my wall over here with all of my race medals. I love to run. I'm not fast. I just get like finisher medals. Let's be clear. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a slow but steady runner. And I had them all hanging up and I ordered this sign off of Etsy and it says live by design on it. And I've had that for years before I ever started the podcast or founded the live by design co, um, which is my business because it just, it resonates so deeply with me. And that really comes from, I'm the oldest of four in my family growing up and I have two much younger sisters, all from the same parents. They just kind of had us in pairs. And my brother uh, was 18 months younger than me. And he was born with just a, a lot of hardship in his life that many of us don't have to face. He was nonverbal. He was a type one diabetic. Um, he had severe scoliosis. And there were just a lot of things. Um, he was on the autism spectrum. There was just a lot that made life just more challenging for him in his day to day. And my parents are incredible and found really great ways. Like we all learn sign language to communicate with him. And um, I grew up going to all of his physical therapy appointments and his OT appointments and all of that. And that experience really shaped me as a, as a young person, because I realized like, wow, what a gift that my body, my physical body is as healthy as it is right now. What a gift that I have the ability to speak um, like verbally with like, what a gift that I can wake up and I don't have to be, you know, checking my blood sugar and be insulin dependent and all of that. And he had a, a, a beautiful life um, and he actually just passed away recently. But even in that, it, it reminds me that life is such a gift and I talk about my brother in the very first episode of my show because he really is the inspiration for living by design and not by default. And it's it's something that has brought so much purpose and passion and joy and just community and friendship into my life, this pursuit of living by design and not like defaulting through my days and getting to be like hopefully 80 or 90 years old. I don't want to look back and be like, oh, dang, I wish I had tried that thing. I'd rather try and fail and at least know that I tried it, right? <laughs> and so that's where Live by Design comes from. It's all about just choosing the things in your life, being really intentional with what you have in your life, whether that's your friendships, your relationships, your hobby, your career, um, and doing things that just make you feel joyful, right? Like living with intention. It doesn't have to be so serious or so heavy, right? It can be leaning into these practices of gratitude. It can be cultivating joy. It can be, um, for me, I love um, physical movement is really like, it's good for my mental health more so than my physical health probably. And so that means carving out time to go for a walk or a run or time to hop on my Peloton. And like, I let my kids watch whatever they want to watch on Netflix. And I hop on the bike for, you know, 30 minutes. And it's about making these little pockets of time in your day and just enjoying your life. And so that's really like, 
who I am and what I'm all about. I should probably mention too that I'm married to my college sweetheart and we actually live in the small town where we first met originally in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, many moons ago as college freshmen. And I'm a mom to two little boys. So now um, they are four, almost five and three years old. So they keep me on my toes. So I, I joke that by day, I'm a, a stay at home mom. And by night, I'm a podcast host and a coach. And those are two things that just really fill me up. Oh, my goodness. We're like parallel universes. I'm with my high school or college sweetheart. I have two boys around the same age. My catalyst for my business is the loss of my, uh, well, the loss of my dog, which is like literally the embodiment of intention. I always say he pulled the sacred intentionality out of me. And it sounds like this intentionality was kind of linked with your brother, which is so beautiful. Um, is, is that, do you think that is what um, propelled you into becoming a coach? Like, were, did you have a, a different job before? Like, what was your journey like? Yeah, you know, you guys can't see right now, but I have like the biggest smile on my face because I'm like, yes, there's definitely a story to this, right? And and isn't there always, right? Because we love to share and guide and teach from our own experience, right? And so for me, what that looked like was growing up, I was very much like a type A, straight A student. Like if I couldn't be the best at something right off the bat, I didn't even want to try. Like I was just so focused on like being valedictorian of my sixth grade class, which is a true story, <laughs> you know, like classic overachiever. And, you know, that worked for a time um, and I made it through college and I, you know, I did really well academically and all of that. I graduated. I started working like a traditional nine to five and I just lost like all of everything that makes me Kate, like vivacious and bubbly and and happy. Um, I just like deflated a little bit in a nine to five. Like I um, I worked in, in an office where everyone else in the U.S. worked from home. And so I was by myself all day. I like craved being around people. Um, and the company I worked for at the time at for no fault of their own was growing and and our offers were expanding, but our, our staff hadn't caught up yet. And so I was in this season of having these nightmares that my email would crash and I would, I would come back from a weekend and I have 300 unread emails and it was just really stressful. And I, I started to run during that time. That's really when I first started running like half marathons. It was something I really looked forward to during my day. And that was kind of one of the ways I was like, I was coping with all of the stress. And I, and at that time in my life, I didn't really know how to ask for help. Um, like in my career, you know, like, Hey, I need assistance. I can't keep doing this. I was like, I'll just work harder and longer, um, which like burnt me out even faster. Right. <laughs> so I started running and sure enough, after like my first half, my hamstrings got so tight and I was like, Oh, I saw that there's a yoga studio down the road. Like maybe I should go check it out. And I had always been interested in, in mindfulness and, um, and I had done yoga in the past, but I, I found in that yoga studio, like a home, I found community, I found people with similar interests, um, the, the physical movements themselves were, were wonderful and life-giving, but it was more about learning from these teachers. And, and when they would teach a class, it wasn't just moving you through the physical practice. They were, they were teaching you about life and it was just so impactful for me. And, so, I, so I'm, I'm in this job. I'm like literally having thoughts on my way to work each day. Like, I wonder if I could just get rear ended where like, I don't get hurt and they don't get hurt, but I don't have to go to work today. Like that was the point I was at. And I was like, okay, red flag. Like this is not good or healthy or sustainable. And I finally had this moment where I'll never forget it. I was sitting on the couch, like on the arm of our couch when we lived in Illinois, my husband and I, and I was just falling. I was just so overwhelmed with my work-life balance and just feeling like I had, like I didn't have a purpose. And I, I'll never forget, he was rubbing my back and he was like, I just wish I could make it better. And that was like, I know like there's that term like an aha moment, but for me, it really was. It was like, oh, okay. I have to, like, no one's coming to save me. Like n I have to fix this. Like I have to take responsibility for my life and not 
stay at the job that everyone tells me is great and like tells me is a wonderful opportunity, which it was, but it just wasn't like filling my cup. Like it wasn't life giving to me in any way. And not that your career has to be life giving, but it was like soul sucking <laughs> at that point. And so I had this moment of realizing like what I'm not changing, I'm choosing. And I was like, holy crap, I have to change some things because I wouldn't choose this. Like 22 year old me who graduated from college, if she had seen herself at 25, wouldn't have chosen how I was feeling. And so to bring it full circle, um, I, I left that position and I became a yoga teacher and I started teaching at that studio. I started managing one of their locations and I just fell in love. I like, I loved guiding classes. I loved connecting with students. Like all of that was just like, it was so right. And then um, we moved from Illinois back to the East Coast, where we're from originally when we wanted to start our family. And that's when I became a coach because I was like, OK, well, I can, I can no longer teach these people in person, but all my students were still really important to me. And a lot of them had asked to work with me more in depth. And when I would teach yoga, I was always sharing about whatever I was reading, which is usually like personal growth type books or empowerment. And so I'd be teaching them about like positive psychology, and like just anything and everything that I was excited about. And, and all of those things were always tied to intentional living. They were always tied to this idea of living by design and not by default. And so in a very, a very long winded answer to your question is that's how I came to coaching. Cause I was like, all right, I want to stay connected with this community. I want to connect with other people. I want to reach back to people who are maybe one or two steps behind me. And and hopefully help them avoid the burnout, the crash and burn, and learn some of those warning signs ahead of time so that you can make shifts when needed. Maybe you don't have to do a 180 degree turn like I did. Maybe you can just make a 10 degree turn, right? Or you can start to implement these self-care practices, these self-love practices, so that you don't get to that point of just like, of being like, I love all my colleagues, but I just can't do this anymore. Um, and just feeling physically exhausted and emotionally drained and mentally taxed. Um, I, that's really why I coach and why I started the podcast was I was like, if I can just help one person, then it's all worth it. I even hesitate to tell you all of the other common threads we have, because I feel like the listeners are going to be like, okay, it's pretty annoying at this point. There's just so much. <laughs> but <laughs> like from like the schooling and the uh, just everything I at one point I just I debated becoming a yoga teacher I was just the whole thing um I did not but what I want to drill into more is like this feeling of um the isolation that can happen when you are internally experiencing something that feels so bad and everything on the outside is looking at you like oh this is it was great. Like you, this great job. Mm -hmm. or, like, and everyone else is fine. And you're like, why? Like I'm, I am uh, privileged and I am this and I am that. Like, why am I feeling so horrendous? And the time that it takes to like really sit with yourself and let those feelings like be validated by no one but yourself. Um, because I feel like sometimes mm -hmm. we feel like we should just be lucky. Or, or feel lucky. We should just be, you know, thankful and use gratitude as like this weapon against ourselves, you know? Um, and I know you said your aha moment was like, okay, no one's coming to save me, but can you talk about, I know it's more than that too, because it's also the hump of, um, okay, I have to, not that we all feel like we shouldn't have to explain ourselves, but the reality is we all end up explaining ourselves to people. Um, what was that <laughs> process? And you're like, okay, I need to make a change. This is what I'm doing. Um, what was that like? Yeah. Wow. Bianca, that's such an insightful question. And I'm not sure if I've ever been asked it in quite that way, but I, I love it. Yeah. So, so here I am like 25 years old, recently married, got a puppy, like life was on the outside looked like, wow, this is picture perfect. Right. And on the inside, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I just like feel unfulfilled and all of that. And so then here's me, like I call her baby Kate. Cause she like was still learning like who she was. And here's like baby Kate, like going to tell her parents, like your Phi Beta Kappa daughter is going to go become a yoga teacher. Like, thanks for that 
helping me through this like incredibly privileged, wonderful four-year education at a college. And now I'm going to go like pay to get trained to be a yoga teacher. And I'm so grateful for the path that I took because my college career very much informed who I am. Um, it, it helped me become a really good learner. Um, and that's a big part of what I do now is I still continue learning. And then I learn so that I can then teach and share. I met my husband, like so many great things, right, from my college experience. But yeah, it was really scary. It actually makes me like a little sweaty to think about even now, like <laughs> almost a decade later of calling up my parents and being like, hey, guys, I'm actually like horribly unhappy right now. And I have to make a change because from the outside, um, I was working for a company where I got to travel to Europe and spend time abroad and meet really fascinating people. But most of the time I was in an office by myself. And that just wasn't an, like, I was never going to thrive in that environment. And it was, it was scary first to, to tell people. And then this really beautiful thing happened where my colleagues, especially at my job were like, yes, like you should go teach yoga. Like you're going to be such a good yoga teacher. And it, it was so funny because I was just like, do you think so? Like, I didn't even know I had ever mentioned my interest in yoga to you or this, this pursuit of, of health and wellness. Um, and that was just so wonderful because at that time I kind of needed, I needed a little bit of that encouragement, right? Because I hadn't quite yet developed that self-confidence muscle. And, and I think a big part of it is I think I had a lot of people pleasing behaviors um, and I've, I've worked really hard at releasing those ton of perfectionism have worked really hard at releasing that. And that doesn't mean they don't come back. They totally do. But now I have this ability. The first thing I always teach, no matter what I'm sharing is, is this ability to have awareness around whatever it is. Right. So when I notice perfectionism creeping in, I'm like, Oh, awareness, this is happening. That's interesting. Like no judgment to yourself, like no critical self-talk, like let that go. Just be like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that's trying to tell me or I wonder what triggered that or I wonder why that came up for me. And then being like, okay, now I'm going to like let that go and move forward. Um, and for perfectionism specifically for me, the best way to combat it is to just take action and like do the thing that I'm trying to do perfectly and just tell myself like when something is done, like done is better than perfect. Um, so I would rather show up imperfectly uh, and, and feel like I'm living by design than to just not show up at all. Right. But yeah, I, and the cool thing that happens is so I, I so this was a very circuitous path. Right. I, I left the full time, stable, safe career. Um, I became a yoga teacher, which was paid hourly. Right. This was like a very big career shift in terms of um, reliability and all of that I had worked I worked so hard. Um, and that's when I first fell in love with podcasts, actually, because I drove, I probably spent more money in gas money than I got paid to teach yoga classes the first six months that I taught. But I just needed to like get in studios and figure out how to get the words out of my mouth in a way that made sense to people. And that's when I started listening to podcasts. I was like, oh, this is great. Here's a podcast about running. Oh, this is great. Here's a podcast about um, learning and growing. And, and that's when I fell in love with this idea of the world of podcasting. And at that time, it never even occurred to me to host my own. And I was like, oh, no, that's like what like well-established professionals do, right? I was still like baby Kate. But the cool thing that happens with each of these decisions that you make that feels in alignment for you. So for me, first it was becoming a yoga teacher. Then it was becoming a health coach. Then it was starting my podcast. You build this self-confidence muscle. You build this this sense that you can trust yourself to make decisions that you don't need someone to tell you what to do. Um, and, and, and at a certain point, you no longer need people to reaffirm you. So when baby Kate needed colleagues to be like, Oh, you'd be a great yoga teacher. And that meant so much to me. And I was so grateful for that. Now I, I'm a podcaster and I have all these big dreams and aspirations that I'm slowly building the foundation to grow towards. But I no longer feel like when I say like, I want to be a published author, I don't feel the need for anyone to like validate that for me. I'm just like, I'm going to do it because that is on my heart to do. And it feels important and purposeful for me. And so that's the cool thing that happens when you really start to listen to yourself. Um, you listen to those, that, that little voice in the back of your head, right? That like whispers those things to you. Like I remember before I, before I ever voiced that I wanted to be a yoga teacher one night, we were driving home from dinner. My husband just turned to me and was like, 
you know, babe, I think you'd be a really good yoga teacher. And I was like, that's hilarious because I've been Googling how to become a yoga teacher. And right, it was so funny. It was, it was like, I was like got goosebumps, you know, it was just like, oh my God, you know me so well. Um, and then when I wanted to start the podcast, one of my best friends texted me out of the blue and was like, hey, I was just chatting with my husband and we both think you should start a podcast. And I was like, that's hilarious because I've been thinking that I wanted to start like start my own show. And so that's the cool thing too, is like the, sometimes the universe I find will kind of send those little nods your way. Like, Hey, that thought that you had was like, that was a good thought. Maybe you should like get a little curious about that. Right. And, and maybe, and I think the biggest thing that I've learned through this whole journey is that none of these is the end destination, right? This is all just like life, like life hopefully is very long and has lots of different seasons that we move through. And so the cool thing is, is that the next thing or the season that you're in right now, it doesn't have to be the thing forever. Maybe it's a stepping stone. Um, I heard this saying once that it's only in hindsight that you can see how like the constellation of your life comes together, right? The way you connect all the stars and you can't see it when you're in it, right? But when you look back, you're like, oh, okay, I have perspective now. Um, so that would be like my biggest piece of advice to somebody who's in that season of like feeling a little unsure or feeling like they need a change, but they're a little nervous is to just take that first step and allow that to, to build your bravery and your courage each step of the way. Oh yeah. The synchronicities that happen when you start leaning into what feels good at not, they're not coincidences at all. <laughs> they're totally, uh, I couldn't agree more. Totally universal nods. And you know, I think a pivotal part of of your story is something that I feel like um, it's really easy to get hung up at and on is when you look at your history and the amount of time and the amount of energy and the amount of whatever you've invested in whatever it is. Um, and it can be hard to let go of that. But the reality is when we're talking about living by design, it's very action oriented. And there are many seasons of like in and out and you know, just because this is what you've always done doesn't mean that it just makes sense or it's the logical thing to always do that. Like there's just so much mm -hmm. choice and there's so much, you know, to build upon. And I think that it, it comes back to this idea of the present moment and really it's the only thing that's real. So no matter how many hours, how many mm -hmm. years, how much, it, whatever it is, that's done. Like that's, that is done. Mm -hmm. And then the future is doesn't exist yet either. It's just right now. So what do you want to do that feels good right now? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a pretty incredible, incredible feat. It's the hindsight. I think that that's so that's something mm -hmm. I talk about in terms of our photo practice is that sometimes I think that we really can bring our hindsight closer to now. Um, and I think that whether it be your photo habit where you're able to extract yourself and like witness what you're looking at from your seat of consciousness, like there are different ways and like tips and tricks that you can kind of pull yourself out of your, you know, forest through the trees moment to be able to see more clearly. But obviously nothing is more clear than being 10 years out from something. But I do think that there are things that we can do <laughs> to try to. <laughs> bring that wisdom into the now. Um, this, this is such a rich, a rich story. I'm so grateful that you're telling it. Something that we've been diving into in the Nostalgia Now membership this month is this idea that this is the you're the perfect person to ask this question to. Um, that we are constantly living into a certain uh, couple of questions that are most relevant and. Um, poignant to us. Um, so it's kind of like a spin on, you know, your why and your purpose, but instead of feeling the heavy weight of like, okay, here is my well-crafted sentence of this is, here it is. Um, I think that it's a little bit more approachable. The point of entry um, is a little bit easier to embark on when we can think about, okay, what is a question like that I am super interested in answering over and over again through my work? I think it's funny because I will, I mean, from high school to now, I think about all the projects I did and I thought they were all brand new. And then I look back, I'm like, oh, it was all about the same thing. It's just different variations of the same thing. <laughs> um, so I want to know um, for you, what, what 
questions do you feel like in the way you live your life, the work that you make, um, the impact that you make in the world, what questions are you answering? Yeah, I, gosh, this is just such a beautiful question. And there's so many different ways that I can go. Um, for me, I find having some like guiding principles to be really helpful. So I, in our family, we call them our core values. Um, so my husband has three and I have three and two of them overlap. But for me, it's having purpose. But, but like you said, not purpose in this like purpose can just feel so heavy. Like when you ask someone like, what's your purpose? Like, if someone asked me that, I'd probably like want to cry. Like, I don't know. Why are you asking me this? And it's funny because I've been diving into this idea of purpose a lot. Um, and I have a monthly collective as well. And we've been diving into purpose and reframing it as asking ourselves, what is it that I can do that makes me feel like I'm spending my time well? And that's cool because that can be leaning into so many different areas that can be being really purposeful about being present, right? Or it can be growing and building something or working towards something, but it can also be really wonderfully tied to right now. So for me, like purpose is a big one for me. Passion is a really big one. And I mean, passion in terms of like, what are the things that I just really love to do, right? Like I love to make these really simple quilts that my grandma taught me how to do when I was eight years old, right? And she passed away a long time ago, but a way that I kind of keep her memory close to me is I make these little quilts for all my friends who have babies, right? And that's what she used to do. And um, I love to run and I love to be crafty and I love to be out of my garden and, you know, all those things. And for me, like passion can, can be that, right? It's just the things that I love to do. Like just, it makes my heart happy. The things where you get into like that flow state where time melts away and you forget to eat lunch and you're just like, you're like, for me, music is usually involved. Like I'm listening to like a really good album or an awesome Spotify playlist. And I just lose all sense of like everything out, everything else other than like me and whatever it is that I'm, I'm doing, whether that's a yoga practice or a watercolor, you just get into that flow state and you like lose it. So we've got purpose, we have passion. Um, and one of the other things that really guides me is just family. And so but not just like spending time with my family. And I include friends in my family. Like I have friends who are absolutely part of my family, but being really present with them, right? So not being on my phone and being really distracted or thinking about three days from now or thinking about what happened yesterday, but just being like, being where my feet are, like just being with them in that moment, sharing a meal or going on a walk or like my kids just love to be outside. I'm lucky if they're actually clothed when we're outside, but like leaving my phone inside when I go out there with them and just being like, okay, I'm just going to like hang out with you guys. I'm not going to like check my text messages or whatever. Like, I'm just going to be here with you. Um, so for me, like if I, if I had, if I had to ask like a question, I would, I would relate it back to my core values of like, okay, is this kind of falling into one of these three buckets? Um, and if it's not, let's get curious about that. Like, why does, why is it of interest, right? Maybe, maybe those buckets need to shift um, because life changes over time. Um, but if I had to distill it down to just like one question, it would just be like, am I living by design or by default? in relation to whatever that thing might be. Right. So you can use that in so many ways, like, um, I mean, ways big and small, I could be like, do I want to go on, um, this like adventurous trip with my family or with my friends? Like, yeah. Does that feel like I'm living purposely? Does that feel like I'm living by design? Like, yeah, it totally does. Um, it can also apply though to being like, you know what, tonight, I just want to like pour a glass of wine and watch The Bachelorette. And like, if you do that with intention, you can really enjoy it, right? Like, that's one of the things at night that I'm like, oh, once a week, I just really, and like, it's, it's not quality, but I really enjoy it, right? And, and I do that with intention. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to have multiple screens open, right? I'm gonna put my phone down, I'm gonna watch this show, and I'm just gonna enjoy the ridiculousness of it, right? And and I choose that for an hour, like, that's the time that I'm like, all right, this is like ridiculous time, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not momming, nobody's touching me, I can have some time to myself to just be, right? <laughs> Bianca's laughing, like, yes, yes, no one's touching me. Um, so yeah, I think that would really be the question I ask myself is like, am I living by design with this decision? Or am I defaulting? And there are definitely seasons of life where we need to slow down, where we need to really nurture and care for ourselves. I'm just coming out of one of those seasons. My brother just passed away a few months ago. And so I had a really like 
evaluate like, okay, what are the things in my life that are really nurturing for me right now? So I started taking walks every morning and that's been like such a beautiful new practice for me of just like quiet time with myself in nature, the sun on my skin. I mean, it's hot here in Pennsylvania in the summer. So like, even though it's 7am when I go, like I get nice and warm and it's just like this really beautiful practice or um, carving out time for myself at night to just like sit and read and just have a little bit of quiet time in bed before I fall asleep and just like let the day kind of melt away. Um, and really just analyzing like, what are the things in my life that are really helping and choosing to lean into those? And what are the things that are maybe like not serving me as well and just choosing to let them go. And, And sometimes that's just letting things go for a season, right? It could mean like, I'm going to pause this project or I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this a couple months from now when I have more bandwidth, right? So giving yourself permission, I think living by design for me, why I love it so much is it gives you permission to choose what serves you well. And, and maybe that's feeling really vivacious and really energetic in a season. Um, and maybe that's taking a step back and slowing down and, and loving yourself really well and, and being really nurturing and parenting to yourself. Um, so it gives you permission to show up in whatever season you're in, um, in the best way that you can for yourself and to do it. I think, I hope at least in a really loving way. What I love so much about the, the way you really bring these examples and these pillars um, uh, to life is that they manifest in very granular, small ways. And I think that is where um, we can get a little bit lost. I think that sometimes it's easy to discredit the little things that feel Mm. like stupid and silly that feel good to us. Um, But to really let them shine, like put a spotlight on them and be like, I, I really like watching this crappy show. I really enjoy it. Like I, I'm not really enjoying it if I'm sitting there watching it <laughs> and saying I shouldn't be watching this. This is a waste of time. I have laundry. I, then you're not doing anything, really. You're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then then that whole hour was wasted because you you didn't yeah. feel good, right? You you felt guilty. You felt stressed. You were judging yourself. Like, but what if you could just give yourself permission to be like just enjoy this ridiculous TV show with all of these 20 and 30 something year olds, like living their best life on TV. Right. Like what if you can just be like, you know what, for this hour, I'm just going to like really enjoy this. (laughs) Sometimes I think that, um, it almost feels like, okay, if I, to be intentional and to, you know, and maybe live by design can feel like a a climb of sorts. Like, okay, I'm going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to, no, it's it's not even. It's actually getting really simple. It's actually getting just really clear on what mm-hmm. feels good. And I love how you say and getting curious about the things that come up because in not everything, in fact, probably most of nothing is good or bad. It's just our desire to label good and bad. Mm-hmm. It can feel good. It can feel bad. Um, yes. But that doesn't mean the actual event is good or bad. And this is going into like consciousness talk and all of this. But like, it's just this idea that when we can be curious and use informa- information as like data points in order to kind of write our, our ships mm-hmm. a little bit, instead of thinking, well, this is good. And most people think this is good. And even though it feels bad for me, uh, it seems like this is good because everyone else is saying so. So I'm going to stay here, or, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, <laughs> So it's a very um, empowered place to come from and and live in, but it's also a very accessible place, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the number one thing that I hope people get in listening to this conversation and listening to the conversation we shared over on my show and listening to any episode that I share or anything that I post is that they feel like they have agency in their life. I, I think sometimes we... I don't know where this comes from. I don't know. I watched a lot of Disney movies coming like growing up where like you get saved by somebody, right? Like the damsel in distress has a knight that shows up and is like, I have the answers to all of your problems. And I don't know if that makes us complacent subconsciously or who knows, right? That's like a whole other conversation. But like when, when we realize like, oh, I, I get to choose how I spend my life. I get to choose the people I share my time with. I get to choose the people I enjoy meals with, that I work with, right? Like I think so many times we think that we're that we're stuck, that we can't leave the whatever it is. 
Um, but actually like everything in your life, you, you, you can choose, maybe not everything. Maybe I shouldn't say everything, but like a lot of things in your life you get to choose. Right. And so what if you took like a radical acceptance of that and, and you really decided like, okay, let's like just slowly, but surely phase out some of the things that don't feel great for me. Let's keep layering in the things that feel like really good and feel vibrant and, and expansive is a word that I know you like to use. Like what feels expansive, right? Like let's add more of that in and, and expansive could be like my morning walk, right? Like I feel great on those walks. I feel like getting back in touch with myself. I'm working out some things. Like I just come back like a more like patient and present person. And, uh, what if we just, we did more of that and we just gave ourselves permission to take control of our lives, to not let it happen to us, but to be like, okay, I'm like an architect in my life and I don't have to wildly change everything so that tomorrow looks totally different. Right. It's just about like, I love how in, in the book, Atomic Habits um, by James Clear, he talks about like 1% shifts. And I like to think about that a lot. Like what, what does a 1% shift every single day or every single week um, look like a year from now or five years from now or 10 years from now, right? And, and the cool thing about life, in my opinion, is that the time is going to pass no matter what. So whether you feel like you're defaulting or you feel like you're living by design, the time is still going to pass. Like in the blink of an eye, we're going to be five years down the road and our kids are going to be almost as tall as us, right? Like it's just going to go so fast. And so what if you could spend that time that you know is going to pass anyways, leaning into living by design? And, and that's what I've seen in my own life, at least is like all of these incremental shifts, um, all of these things of choosing what feels good um, le leads over time to this sense of well-being. Um, that I want everyone to get to experience this, this feeling of like, you look at your calendar and you're really content, right? You feel really good about it. And that that's a cool place to be. So that's always my hope is like somebody walks away from these conversations, just being like, yeah, I could take charge of my life. And like, maybe it doesn't have to be big and scary. Maybe it can, maybe it can be small. It can be small ways that add up uh, over time. And using your agency. I mean, you're the CEO of your life. Like, your nice to have doesn't have to be a nice to have. It can be a non-negotiable that turns into a calendar tap. Like your walk isn't like an option unless you decide that you're not, you know, like it's like, no, this is my, this is what I do in the season of life. And here it is. It's like just as important and no one else is involved in this calendar tap, but me, you know, it's just, and it's yes. such a huge passion point of mine too. I, I usually refer to it. I just, grew up thinking of it in this way and like wanting to desperately avoid autopilot mode in my life. And I, I kind of phrase it when, when I talk about it in as like challenging norms, because what's so tricky about it is that there are so many ways. And this is something that I'm consciously like aware of and like it, it's heightened for me, but there's still so many ways in which I do things and I live that I realize, oh, wait, why am I, why am I doing it this way? Oh, because this is the only thing I've ever seen. And I actually don't have to do it this way. Like, I think that there's just so much excavating that can be done and which is great. It's, it's not even in the way of like, oh, there's just so much. It's in, I think that there's just so much opportunity to feel better and live more into your life the way that you want to. Um, so long as we just stay curious and turn our attention to the things that don't feel great or not that. They don't feel bad. They don't feel good. They just feel meh. I'm like, how can this feel better for me? You know? Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that question of like, how can I make this um, my, um, I work with a, a, like a spiritual business coach and I had her on my show a while back and she said, how can I make this more pleasurable? And she didn't mean it in like a, like physical intimacy. It was just like pleasurable, like how can I make this like cup of tea that I made, like just one degree more pleasurable? Like, can I add, um, this honey that I, I love and I, I just save it for my tea. Cause it's like really herbaceous or what, you know, whatever it is. Right. Or, um, you're like snuggling on the couch and you're reading a book and you're like, how can I make this like just a tiny bit more pleasurable? Like maybe you start a fire or maybe you light a candle or, um, you grab like your very favorite cozy sweatshirt and you put it on like what are these little tiny ways in your day that you can just make it just slightly more pleasurable, right? Because like to your point, 
of like life is right now. Like the only thing we get for sure is this moment that we're in right this minute. So how can we make it just a tiny bit more pleasurable, a tiny bit more purposeful, a tiny bit more by design. Oh, what a beautiful way to wrap up. I I love this so much. Kate, please tell us, I know that they're going to be curious. How can we find more of you online? Uh, where are all the places and spaces and what, what do you have coming up? Uh, thank you so much, Bianca. Well, this was so much fun. I could just talk with you forever. I think we're going to just continue being in each other's spheres because we have so much in common. <laughs> so I'm so grateful just to to share more time and space with you. So thank you for that. Yes. So my podcast is the Live by Design podcast, and you'll be able to find Bianca on there as well. So I'm super excited to share that conversation with you all. And Online, my website is Miss Kate House because I guess there's another Kate House out there and she beat me to it. So it's M S K A T E H O U S E dot com. And that's where you can find my monthly women's collective, my one on one coaching, um, my courses on there. I have a course coming out about purpose and intentional living this fall in October. So that'll be available over there. And, um, and the best place to connect with me to really you know, I find, I'm sure you've had this experience, Bianca, on a podcast, it's very much this one-way conversation, right? Like we are sharing via the podcast, but our listeners don't get to connect with us. So I just started my Facebook group. If you go to misskatehouse.com slash community, that will automatically direct you over to my Facebook group. And that's where we can just continue this conversation of living by design and not by default. So if you're interested in joining, I'd love to have you I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank we would love so to have you. <laughs> we will no doubt talk to you again soon.